you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me one quick favor, see that little black subscribe button on the bottom of your screen, go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button really does help this channel grow my audience grow. And I appreciate it more than, you know, also quick, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook of the Betfred Sportsbook app, bet $50 on any game. Get up to $1,111 in free bets, courtesy of the Betfred Sportsbook. Thank you again. Now, here is the video that you came here for. I know that for like seven or eight straight shows now, I have claimed that I am done talking real. I'm not, not going to talk it anymore. We've talked about it enough. And then every single show I come back and we continue the conversation, but it is simply because every single day there has seemingly been a new story involving what was once the Pac-12 and where all of their schools end up. You don't need me to tell you, but it started with Colorado. Then we had the, the reports of are more schools going to join Colorado in the Big 12. Then the Big 10 got involved. Then we thought everybody might stay together. Then Oregon and Washington left for the Big 10. Then, of course, the three uh, corner schools, Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah, left for the Big 12. And, of course, there were four schools left behind, Stanford, Cal, Washington State, and Oregon State. On Monday's show, we talked a little bit about their future, and I was perfectly blunt. It did not look good. Um, and over the last couple of days, there, there has been a little bit of movement, interest, conversation, whatever. One, they're obviously going to try to hold it together, but that doesn't feel realistic, and we'll explain why momentarily. The AAC has gotten in the mix. The Mountain West is certainly interested in at least Washington State and Oregon State. Cal and Stanford are trying to get to the ACC. But the reality is there are simply just not very many good options for these schools. And for some of them, specifically Washington State and Oregon State, it does look like a very bleak picture going forward. And let me do the caveat by saying Washington State and Oregon State fans, I feel bad for you. You've done everything you can. You've been competitive. You've had good coaches. You've had good teams. Obviously, Mike Leach at Washington State just three, four years ago had him as a 9-10 win team, whatever it was. Oregon State is coming off a 10 win season as well. Um, but when I say that it is not, it's a bleak deal and it's not looking good, that's not just my opinion. Let me make that clear. That is because on Wednesday, for the first time, a guy that was right in the thick of things spoke, and that was Kirk Schultz, the Washington State School president, who did a sit down with Pete Thane. Now, to Schultz's credit, listen, it feels as though uh, he's doing everything he can for his school. He said, we want to spend at the Power 5 level. Uh, he said he does not plan on cutting any schools. They're going to look for outside sources of revenue if that's a student fee or whatever. But he was also very transparent in that this is not going to be easy and that the budget is going to be really tight going forward. Uh, he projected they could lose as much as 40% of their budget when it comes to their athletic department. That is mortifying. Think about anybody, if you own a business, if you have a job, imagine losing 40% of your revenue, 40% of your salary, that's insane. And so that is the reality for Washington State. That's certainly the reality for the other three. And Schultz said some very interesting comments on the record that I want to get into, and none of them are good. This was the one that caught my attention in terms of just how bleak it could be from the athletic department budget. He said, I don't want to minimize it. There is some budget exercise that needs to be done. You're laying people off. Your best coaches are always on the market. All of a sudden, one of those offers to a coach that didn't look so good a year ago, it looks different today. And as weird as that sounds, it doesn't seem like a crazy quote, but that was the one that really rang true with me. And let me explain why. It made me realize like this is not good. And it's because of one simple reason. One, I think when it came to realignment, me and you and all the fans that don't work or don't play or don't have a son or daughter that plays at Washington State or Oregon State or Cal or Stanford, we all sat there and we looked at the 30,000 foot stuff. Oh, we're going to lose the Apple Cup and we're going to lose the Civil War and we're going to lose Pac-12 after dark. Well, as Kirk Schultz said, there are people that could potentially lose their jobs. There are schools that are going to have to make major budget cuts. And then I also think that when we think budget cuts, we think about all the frills, right? We think about, oh, this facility isn't going to get an upgrade. Guess they aren't getting that new uh, tennis facility. Guess that football team isn't getting a new locker room. And it's like, no, it's not just that. 
it's not just the the coach getting some ridiculous extension like a you know like in the SEC when they give him an extension for going seven and five and going to a bowl game. I thought the quote about losing assistant coaches was really interesting. It reminded me of something I talked about. I talked to somebody about early this off season. Um, I talked to a, a basically if you you want to call him a quote unquote GM of one of these group of five uh, college football programs. He said to me, he said, Aaron, you know what the hardest thing is for us to do? It's not to win games. It's not to recruit. It's not NIL. He goes, the hardest thing for us is to retain really good coaches. He said bluntly, he's like, look, we're coming off a really good season. This was a school that, that, that was coming off a really good season. And he said, we got momentum. We got excitement. We lost an assistant or two. He goes, just about all of them had offers to go somewhere else for more money. And a lot of them came back just because they want to ride the wave and the, the momentum and there's excitement around the program. But he was also very transparent. He was like, this coming off season, if we have the kind of season that we expect, we're probably not going to be able to, we're, we're, we went from losing one or two, we're probably going to lose four, five, six. And so these are the realities of running a major athletic department at the highest level. It isn't just the fancy facilities. It isn't just the first class travel. It isn't just the meal. It isn't just the dining. It's losing good coaches. Forget even the head coach. It's losing good assistants. It's losing good coordinators. It's losing good position coaches. Um, Obviously in this NIL world, retaining players is going to be harder. And that's the reality of what Washington state, Oregon state are going through. And the sad part is there's, there's no easy soft landing spot, right? Like it's one thing if schools leave, but you know, this is the answer. One thing if schools leave, but that's the answer. One thing if you can leave and it's not a perfect situation, but you're okay, right? Like Arizona State right now, think about Arizona State. They didn't want to leave, but it's a lot better than the alternative of having stuck behind with, with everything that's going on with these schools that are remaining. So it's not pretty. Um, and I'll be curious, you know, do, do Washington State and Oregon State end up in the Mountain West? Schultz referenced that specifically, that that could be a good landing spot. And I'll tell you, I did the reaction on Monday's show. People didn't want to hear it. Um, I don't think it's the worst spot for him. Now, it's not the best spot, but one, we're not keeping this Pac-12 thing together. Um, You couldn't get TV money with Oregon and Washington and Arizona and whomever. You're certainly not getting a good TV deal without them. The Mountain West schools can't get out of their TV contracts. Geographically, nothing else makes sense. I thought it was interesting. Schultz basically acknowledged, um, you know, anything, any, any conference that's on the East Coast, he's like, it's got to be an exorbitant amount of money. Otherwise, we're not even going to consider it. Um, But I do think there's some upside, right? And I want to be a little bit positive going out of this segment. But one, this is the most important thing. Remember, for the first two years of the college football playoff, there are going to be automatic bids for the top six conference finishers. That matters because remember, if you win the Mountain West, you're probably getting an automatic bid to the college football playoff. And so if you're Oregon State, if you're Washington State, this isn't what you want, but maybe you can build some momentum. Maybe you can become a great Mountain West school that puts itself in position for the next round of realignment. I think I mentioned it on one of the shows. They're all bleeding together at this point. But I I know for a fact that Cal was finally starting to invest in some of its programs, specifically basketball under Mark Madsen, with the hope that, hey, we want to be good by the time that next round of realignment comes. Unfortunately, it came much faster than, than they realized. And so I bring it up because it's not all doom and gloom. The Mountain West isn't great. And hopefully you can build something there. But also the reality is it is going to be an uphill battle from here. A couple other interesting quotes from the Schultz interview with Pete Thamel. Um, one basically said what we all knew. School presidents were not in line. Basically acknowledged that everybody, the second that USC and UCLA left, uh, everyone was fighting for themselves. Basically said, you know, uh, everybody's kind of looking out for their own best interest. That's not surprising. And then he basically unofficially threw George Klyovkov under the bus. And this was something I don't even think I realized as things were going on. But the Big 12, remember, they got ahead of the Pac-12 in terms of the pecking order of of TV deals and all that stuff. Uh, The Big 12 hired a big, fancy consulting firm to get it done. I believe it was maybe IMG. Uh, Klyovkov basically hired a friend to do their deal, and it all fell through. Bad deal for Washington State. Bad deal for Oregon State. Cal Stanford will see. 
but you feel bad, like I said. Oregon State is a great program with a great coach under with Jonathan Smith. Washington State, I think they've done everything they can, and I hope that this all works out well for them.